like, I mean, what we did with the virtual handshake, I mean, part of it, part of it was about, you know, part of it was about the whole virtualness of it. And we were kind of, you know, saw that trend, writing that trend, but I mean, really, you know, in terms of what our, our innovation there was, was the big question was, why do been so many people, not, not just why do so many people network that? Because, I mean, you can figure some of that out. It's, why are there so many people who seem to be networking well and still not getting business results from it? <laughs> right? This is actually, you'll actually see, uh, I have a post going on John Janch's, John, uh, Duct Tape Marketing blog. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tomorrow. Uh, I have a guest post tomorrow about selfish networking. No kidding. And, and as part of Make a Referral Week. And this is talking about, you know, They will give you the shirt off their back. They're at every networking event, and they're still broke. They don't and they ne and they don't have the money to invest in their business in the place you know in different places. They they will try to mask it. They'll try to cover it, but there's still always sort of just a, a hint of desperation there. I mean, right? Everybody who's been any time going to networking meetings knows this person or two or three. Or it may be themselves if they're honest with themselves. You see, what happens is the networking, networking, networking is fun. There's no rejection in networking unless you're a real tool, right? I mean, you know, you're you're always. I mean, someone will have a conversation with you. Someone will greet you. Someone will exchange business cards with you. Someone will follow up with you, and you know, even if you don't follow up with them. So there's no there's no real rejection in networking, and so it feels good. And so what happens then is as soon as you get any results, as soon as you get one deal, it becomes a validation of what you've done. You see, the mind wants to be right. Your brain's purpose, your brain's purpose is to be right. And so as soon as you have any kind of results in networking, it becomes a validation of whatever your process has been. Never mind that had you done it differently, you could have had three, five, ten times the results. It becomes a validation. So what happens is you end up thinking you have to do more of the same. And by the way, what I'm talking about is saying networking, this super applies in social media, right? So you get one business lead from Twitter and you go, all right, Twitter's my new strategy. I got, you know, I got a, you know, a business lead through that, right? And so, there, but there's no way of looking at it and, and, and evaluating. You know, there's no really way of uh, most people won't look at it and evaluate the, the really the ROI of their time. And because, because we, we got this whole thing about you know networking about givers gain and you know about givers gain and give first and, and, and I totally believe that you know I mean I'm, I'm totally into that. But you still when you talk about the activities that you're going to engage in and the people you are going to choose to spend your time with. Given that you have limited bandwidth, you cannot you cannot communicate with everyone in the world, right? <laughs> right so. so you have to make these choices. Yeah, I guess the difference is that for some people networking is fun and from other ones it's strategy. So to make difference. I mean and, but this is my question. My experience, at least in, in Spain and, and to some extent here also in the US, is that most of the, the networking interventions you do don't lead you anywhere. I mean, it's a lot of time you spend with people that doesn't lead you anywhere. So my question would be, how can you, uh, let's say, uh, get, get your performance up? How can you get more out of your time? And I think it's hard. So. Well, and so this is the thing, and, and I, you know, I also, the, the problem with, you can't really do with networking the same kind of evaluation a large corporation can do with social media. Because, because you have too small a, a sample set, right? And so this is the thing, is you can sit there and see, you know, you can't really do it just by measured results. Because, because uh, you know, because there is that randomness element. However, let's face it. You know, if you sit there, if you're a 
scientist and you're doing research. You don't go into the lab and go, I'm going to throw everything in the world together and hope something happens. Right? If you're sitting there and you're researching trying to make super glue, you're going to take known stuff about adhesives from the collective body of knowledge, not your own personal experience, from the collective body of knowledge, which has more data points. And this is where this is where a lot of people, so maybe a lot of people screw up with networking is they try to go off their own data points. You don't have enough data points. You don't have enough samples. And so you can go off of these known things as far as you know these, these known models as far as that as what kind of activities produce what kind of results. And if this is you were asking about this. So then how do you maximize your ROI thing? This is, how do you maximize the return on your efforts? And this is what the whole this is what the seven keys framework and the virtual handshake is all about. And it's a free download. I don't know if you have to, yeah, I'm not trying to sell you on the book. But I'm trying to sell you on the idea of going and downloading and reading chapter, you know, the first two chapters. But the, the, the whole thing is that, and this is where we see a lot of missing in social media strategy, in personal social media strategy, and in networking strategy, is what's going to work for an info guru selling $7 ebooks versus what's going to help work for somebody selling enterprise software into Fortune 1000 clients versus a musician. How can they possibly be the same strategies? So the question is how to figure out, you know, not, other than just through sort of the personal expertise of your social media strategist, how can you develop a framework for figuring out what the best strategy is depending upon what your business is? Yeah, but 